Okay, well, choice of cameras is, uh, you know, durability and the weight of the camera. And I, I myself like to use zoom lenses in and out, 35 to 75 or whatever it is in a zoom. And I like Canon cameras, particularly because the it has a very advanced quick focusing mechanism where I, I put on auto focus because I, I can't take time, which a lot of old school photographers take time to shoot manual focus, you know, which is really neat until you got uh, a president of the United States out in front of you <laughs> and he's going, what's taking you so long? Well, I'm focusing the camera. You have to put it on autofocus. So, so particularly Canon lenses are really quick at, at focusing. You very seldom get an out of focus camera where in some other brands, I don't want to alienate <laughs> Yeah, anybody because who knows down the line but there's some other cameras that are very popular where the focusing mechanism is quite slow and so that's when you're photographing people you you have to have rapid uh, equipment and everything the strobes recycle and interestingly enough quite often <laughs> And sessions that was one recent we did we have not just one power pack but we may have five power packs that are all synced together using, sorry, but slave cells mm -hmm. on each one. And there's different schools that thought there's a photo slave, you know, light slave. And then yeah, optical slave. Th then there's radio mm -hmm. slaves, which we had an experience with Lynn and I on a session where the radio slaves sometimes fail. Mm -hmm. So I like optical, and uh, there's also on this, the strobe packs, there's usually an audible beep that tells you when the, it has recycled mm -hmm. within a half a second or a quarter of a second. But, <laughs> Ken, when you've got five strobes <laughs> and they're all beeping. How do you know which one didn't beep? Well, it needs to know when to beep that it didn't go off, but it doesn't know they're supposed to go off, so it can't beep. So is that your problem then? Yeah, we we had this session in, uh, in Colorado uh, where we had to photograph 60 couples, 65, 60 couples, okay, very prominent donors to a big Christian organization in Colorado Springs. Okay, that's fine. And then there are 50 couples and they were going to, to uh, all attend and they uh, had them organize, these 50 couples, and they stood in line, they queued up to be out in front of my camera but I had to photograph all 60 within one hour. Okay, <laughs> you figure you got one minute to do uh, for, for each person, couple, and you had to photograph them, make sure they're focused, you, and get their expressions, get their clothes together, the guys had to have their ties on straight, and the, all within one minute. And if you missed anybody, oh, very bad, or you get graded down really bad. So that's it. Uh, and oh, that's where we use five strobes. Uh, two were in the for the background lighting. Uh, two, one was for the hair lighting that was up on the up on a boom above. Another one was for the main light source. <laughs> and so we we pulled out all the stops on that way. It, it took a, quite a, a deal to get them all synced up. And so that's the occasion where we needed to work quickly with our Canon cameras on our tripod. Uh, everything had to be just perfectly synced up because we couldn't make any mistakes. We couldn't bring anybody back mm -hmm. and say, oh, we missed it. You know, would you come back and get on the mark again? And so anyway, so there's occasions like that. And then there's, <laughs> anyway, I have a lot of examples where uh, the, the light sources have to be reliable. By the way, we were using norms. We were using mm -hmm. norms on that because they're each one's fifteen hundred watt seconds, <laughs> you know, because we had to split them and maybe each one's eight eight hundred. And okay, I didn't want to get into the technical sides of things. People will fall asleep out there. But the uh, the ones that you mentioned, the strobe is within the light in this, the the uh, 
the reflector, isn't it? Yeah, my little Novatrons, which are inexpensive and sold to me by my buddy Steve Cerrone 20 years ago, and I'm still using the same American-made set that cost me a whopping $500 from Steve. Yes, there's one power pack, and then each of the heads themselves plug into this, you know, with a long cord, into the main power pack that powers four heads. And you can set the lighting ratios by adjusting the brightness at each head, as opposed to other power, other units that actually have, you just plug the head itself into the wall. So it's either a main power pack or power at the strobe. Yeah, I've worked some of those, and so, but they're, they're really very reliable and it's a, a big help. So those are the, the technical things that a lot of people may not be confronted with. But on these big commer commercial sessions, a lot of people involved and uh, so it's a fair amount of money involved. And uh, in this particular case, I would travel from Los Angeles to Colorado Springs and go back and forth, and so uh, it's it, 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 the old days of having a leisurely session, and we just walk in and just play with the camera and shoot Polaroids. <laughs> and nowadays, with uh, digital, it's made it much easier for us. So uh, it's each, each session is a new challenge. So it isn't always depth of field, and it isn't always keeping pictures from being blurred, but the subject has to look real vital and like they're really with it. And sometimes my clients will come in and they've been drinking too much diet soda. <laughs> and what I have to watch for is their eyes will dilate. And dilated eyes, because of too much stimulant or maybe mm -hmm. something they drank or whatever, uh, can can kind of dull their eyes down, and then you get comments later. How come her eyes look so boring? Like she's you know out of it. She looks out of it. Well, it may not be. Just, so I found that this is a little technical thing. I try to keep the lights in the studio. It's it's not real bright, but I like a brightly lit room. Uh, they're not dark, an old dark studio like the old days, so that to allow their eyes to stop down. You can see more color in their iris mm -hmm. when the, the iris is stopped down. That's one of those things I try, and I try not to allow them to bring in any kind of alcohol, because you, know, you lose your synchronous, synchronous, you know, you, you can't sync up with a person that's been drinking a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And, it, it, and then you lose your intuitive connection. It's a whole other subject, but quite often we get on a real intuitive level. So what I'm thinking, a pose I'm thinking, quite often the subject will take on that pose. Like Angelina Jolie, I think of a pose and she went right into it just miraculously, you know. So when you're on that wavelength, a, a real subtle c communication, unspoken, communication, there's anything that can throw that balance off should be avoided. Mm -hmm. Notice that Harry never actually told us what his favorite camera was. Did you have a particular model you liked or are they all good from Canon? Yeah, when I'm shooting, I've had the, the best experience and most reliable experience using a Canon 5D uh, and it's been a real workhorse for me, as they say, and it's very durable. It's very light, by the way, to hand hold, which I'm quite often doing for maybe two or three hours, hand holding a camera. I don't like to use a tripod too much with a camera, only because it does, it makes the camera static. And if the subject is one, one of these people that likes to bob around and let me spin in front of and catch me spinning, and I go, oh no, not that. And so I have to be very mobile, hand holding right up to my eye. You see, with a Hasselblad, you, you peer down into the eyepiece and, you, and everything is sort of backward, upside down. And the, the days of the Hasselblad was a Hasselblad's a two and a quarter, two and a quarter electric driven camera. And again, another workhorse. And so they're obsolete. Some of these cameras become obsolete. It's kind of sad to see them where they're, they're more practical cameras come out. So, so I don't like to experiment around with cameras too much. Uh, I like to stay with one that's very reliable. 
and so the Canon is very, very reliable. What about you, Ken? Well, I'll admit it's a dirty secret for most photographers, but I'm not usually working in the studio. And so when I'm just running around, I think Desert Island camera, my iPhone, which actually I can't show you here now because it's making this video right now is my iPhone. It works under moonlight. It pretty much does everything, but it won't shoot with strobes in the studio. For everything else, when I have to look like a real photographer, I also love my Canon. And I also love my Canon 5DSR that I got when it first came out in 2014. I love that thing to death. It's great for shooting in the studio. Mirrorless doesn't work well with strobes in the studio. Another little dirty secret of mirrorless because the diaphragms really aren't set that well. So if, if you're photographing manually, because I'm doing more product photography, but honestly, I also love my Canon. I shot everything else. And when Harry was talking about Hasselblad in New York, that reminds me. I was talking to one of the major manufacturers of digital medium format back. Do these sold for as much as a small house or a brand new Mercedes, somewhere in that line? And I said, who on earth needs this ridiculous amount of resolution? Because even if you're making billboards, the billboard's far away, so you don't need that much more resolution. And what he said was, he says, you know, Ken, if you're shooting in Manhattan, and if you're getting forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a day in your studio, well then, sometimes you get clients, like Harry mentioned in one of our previous videos, with the clients like, oh, well what camera do you have? Then you have to show up with, you know, the Hasselblad or the Leaf or the whatever it is, you know, some ridiculous camera with a five-figure price tag because they'll feel like somehow they were slighted for their forty, fifty, like sixty thousand dollars a day if we're not shooting with a forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar camera. But in terms of the picture quality, eh, it's not that much different because the picture quality comes from in here. It's your imagination. Yeah. The art directors too, or the people from the record company, the magazine, their experience, and they go from in New York. One day it'll be <laughs> this person, one day yeah. that person, and they're so jaded. You know, they just expect you to have the best equipment, the best strobes, but there can't be any misfires or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they kind of check out the assistants. Are the assistants real capable? Are they well dressed? And you know, that's just as important as the equipment. But we'll get on that another subject. Oh, hair and makeup people are very important too, because if you don't hire a good hair, this is in technical stuff, but but hair and make people can make or break a shooting session if they're not adept at what they're doing, you know. And so, uh, I've got a, I hate to say, a stable of people that I call on. But even then, sometimes they have good days and bad days, you know, and so uh, that's another subject, you know, hair and makeup people I have to be very aware that uh, if you hire another human being to do something as intimate as doing makeup on, on a subject who's a very famous person or doing hair, you, you, if something goes wrong, it's not their fault, it's the photographer's fault. And so they, they I get blamed if, if anything goes wrong with hair and makeup. Do you ever have a problem? I remember when we used to use a lot of babysitters, little kids, apparently the women in town, it's taboo to steal somebody else's babysitter. You don't even ask because babysitters are so crucial and if you get a ba babysitter. So did you have that in the photography world where people try to steal or was it taboo to attempt to steal or even so much talk to somebody else's hair or makeup person because they are so critical? Yeah, they do. There's a certain amount of loyalty um, amongst them. So it's, uh, it's something that we're all, it's an unwritten thing. But, no, but they, they're free. They're freelancers to uh, <laughs> to do as they please, but you know, of course, nowadays you know they're lucky to get the work that they are getting. You know, so the New York um, hair and make people are very adept. You know, it's a, it's a very that's a whole other subject. It's not technical, but when you're getting a, you have to really put a lot of trust into a makeup person that will add eyelashes, glue eyelashes onto a famous person's eyes and and put mascara on the mask. I've had a case where the mascara will cause an e eruption in the person's eyes and oh, just totally wiped out the shooting session. And I, so we, I have to be very careful about that. And so, so that's a whole other subject. 
It is, and admittedly, we could talk about cameras. Something I asked when I said, gee, we should do a little video saying, what's our favorite camera? I was like, well, there's no one camera. For me, it's a matter of what I'm going to shoot. For instance, if I'm gonna be serious and not have to do anything for anybody else and just shoot film for my own personal fun, I love my traditional Hasselblad shooting film. So it all depends on what we're shooting. So Harry, thanks again for your time. Thanks for your hospitality, having me over to your house. It's, it's been a joy getting to talk to oh, the iconic to Harry Langdon here live. Oh, thank you very much. You know, it's, it's sort of humbling, you know, the, the pressure that one is on when you're doing these creative jobs. You, you have to stay real, it's grounded because they expect a photographer to have an attitude, by the way. They expect you to be, a, you know, an ego. And so uh, the, the people that are my subjects are the ones that should have the ego. And so I'm used to that. But I have to be, be careful about being uh, snotty, you know, abrupt with them. I have to treat them with a lot of care. And so I'm so usually so grateful that they're coming in to have me take their pictures. It's an it's an honor, you mm -hmm. know. So anyway, that's a whole other subject, which is real interesting. Anyway, thanks a lot, Ken. I enjoyed that. Thank you. We'll do another one.